Hi everybody, how are you? This is attorney Brooke Goff of Goff Law Group. Um, I'm calling in today per the promise. Um, actually, we're doing a Facebook Live today per a promise that um, I would talk about, I was in an accident, I need money now, what do I do? There are many more options, guys, than to just settle, okay? Most people think, okay, I need money, I need to just, you know, tough it out, not do treatment, try to work it out with the insurance carrier, whatever the case might be. The answer is that's wrong, and there are some options for you. I can't tell you how many clients I've had come into my office later, so let's say three months later, no treatment, have a catastrophic injury, it's like a back or a neck injury that eventually requires surgery, that says, look, I couldn't afford to be out. Right, and it's a valid concern, especially, I mean, you, you guys have kids, you have houses, you have mortgages, you know, your life can't stop, neither can your bills, right? So I'm here today to talk to you about what options you have if you're in an accident, and obviously you need money now. And by that I don't mean, hey, I'm in an accident, now all of a sudden I need money. I mean, you now have a car, if you were in a car accident, that needs to be fixed, but possibly a deductible if the insurance doesn't get involved quick enough. You have, um, you know, no, potentially you can't go back to work. You may have co-pays or medical bills, deductible. All these things kind of pile up and they scare people. And people don't get the treatment they need every day. And it's frightening because how many times we end up working this out toward the trial end of the case, toward the, you know, let's say, I don't know, a year to a year and a half after the injury happened. And the clients are like, I really wish I just did the treatment or I knew what you're telling me right now. So guess what? I'm telling you so you can all be prepared and know what your options are in the event that you're in an accident and you need money or we'll say pre-compensation quicker. So firstly, let me just kind of walk you through something here. The insurance companies know and are trained adjusters that you are going to run into hard times, right? In Connecticut, we don't get our money up ahead. Your medical bills don't get paid right now, they get paid at the end. If you have no insurance, then you have no real options, right, for medical treatment if you're representing yourself. And if you have insurance, you may have a copay or deductible. However, now you're not working, so how are you gonna come up with the 30 to $50 for the copay or deductible, right? Right. So we really need to, you know, get, kind of focus on what the important things are here and how you're gonna manage that difficult part, which is the most difficult part of a case for somebody is the first 30 to 60 days, right? So firstly, People always ask me, insurance company calls me, they offered me $500, I think I'm just gonna take it and walk away, I need the $500 and they'll pay my medical bills. Well, guess what guys, they have to pay your medical bills anyways, but at the end of the case. When you hire a lawyer to handle your car accident case or slip and fall or whatever kind of case you have, we have communications and contacts with the doctor so that the doctors will understand they get paid at the end of the case or when you get paid if you don't have insurance. So that's handled. That's called a letter of protection, okay? So now you know that there's no real, I mean, unless you handle it yourself, there's no real excuse as to why you would settle with the insurance just because they offer to pay your medical bills. Because guys, guess what? Again, they have to pay your medical bills anyways. And that's first. The insurance companies know like I said, that you're losing work and that they're, they, that's why they don't call you, you know, a week later and say, hey, look, let's settle. They wait a month. They wait a month and a half. So you've started getting in the, the uh, bills, right? You've started getting in your statements. You are now not working or you took time off of work and can't get back ahead to where you were. And everything around you is chaotic. You're injured. You can't help yourself. You, you know, you, like I said, you can't return to full duty at your job, whatever the case might be. Then they kind of come in for the kill. All right. And then they say, Hey, look, John Smith, we understand you were injured in a car car accident. We're going to give you $500 plus pay your medical bills. And to some people, they're so concerned because they keep getting statements and collection calls from the insurance, from the, excuse me, the hospitals and everybody else. They're like, okay, adjuster, I will take your offer. And the adjusters, honestly, guys, they do cartwheels out the room because I will tell you probably five out of 10 people, this isn't a real statistic, but I'm, I'm estimating five out of 10 people actually do that. They do it. They fall for it. And the insurance companies are designed. They, they do this. They design this, this plan. Everything is set to the date as to how we can get the clients to take the least amount of money in the beginning of the case or after three months or whatever the case might be. So they offer crappy money, offer to pay your medical bills, which it would have to do at the end of the case anyways. And then they say, and then you say, well, I'm going to get a lawyer. Well, a lawyer's going to take a third. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they are. Sure. I'm going to take a third, a third of a hell of a lot more than your medical bills in $500, right? It's going to be a lot more of a settlement, which makes your medical bills in $500 look irrelevant. I had a client come in 
and she uh, had injured her an ankle in a car accident. Allstate was on the other side. They offered her 10 grand. And if Allstate offers 10 grand, they smell blood in the water, just to let you know. So there's clearly something here, right? Fine. So she ends up, she ended up, what she did is she tore tendons in her foot. And I'm like, okay, we need to make sure we get you to the med right medical providers, right? Because like I said, if Allstate's offering 10 grand, blood in the water, all right? She'll tell you a lot. She'll tell you something's up. She goes in um, and she needs surgery. Gets the surgery, the whole thing. I have the case maybe 13 months from the point she came in. Um, settled the case for 180,000. So she asked, right, she could have taken the 10 grand, right? I, uh, then she would have walked away with 10 grand. Or I got her the 180,000. I got a third of that, which is 60. My client walked away with, I don't know, after meds and everything, probably 110,000. It's not rocket science, guys, and it's not brain surgery. It is the insurance company doing what they're paid to do, mitigate their damages, and put you in a corner so you're forced to have no other choice. And how can they do that? They squeeze you out financially. So what do you do? You're in an accident. You now have co-pays. You're getting these statements in the mail. People are starting to call you because you know, God forbid, hospitals wait five minutes for their money. And now you really feel like you're screwed. There are pre-settlement funding loans that will help you. Now, I am not a pre-settlement funding loan spokesperson. I actually, in many cases, advise against it. All right? You should just know that. I have no affiliations with any of these companies. I don't get any kickbacks from these companies. None of the above. So that's just in full disclosure. But they're here for a reason, right? But you have to be careful. Because some of them... Well, let's start first. If you're a pro se, which means you represent yourself, you have no lawyer, you think you're beating the system, which you're not, because you're going to get... My third becomes irrelevant, guys, okay, when it comes down to settlement, because I get way more than settlement, then they, you can't even, they're not even the same stratosphere. So my thirds are relevant because you still walk with three, four, five, six times what you would have walked with without me involved. All right. Just to, to let you know. But if you don't have a lawyer, these companies will not lend you any more than depending on your case, 750, a thousand. I've seen them go up to 1500 on surgical cases like rotator cuffs. That's about it. All right. And they're, they don't behave. They don't behave because they know that you may not know what the contract's supposed to say, right? So they may offer, they may say to you, hey, uh, John Smith, we'll give you 1500 bucks, but we're going to compound it at 40% interest every three months, which is crazy, guys. Think about that. 40% every three months. Most credit cards are 10% and it's not every three months. Um, so we're going to compound it every three months at 40%. Um, so you're going to borrow 1500 and after a year, you're going to owe, going to owe us back 3500 oh, But wait, we're going to compound it every three months so that that number goes up every time. So in two years, um, we're going to be owed now 7500 But guess what? 3500 is not compounded. So now you're stuck, right? You borrowed 1500 and I have to pay these freaking people back $10,000. You're like, what happened? I have seen more of these contracts be unethical and honestly, questionably, um, you know, can be brought up with the, um, with the uh, state of Connecticut as, as illegal um, than anything because they don't put a cap on them. And you're not a lawyer. You know how to read this stuff, right? So you're like, okay, well, I got my 1500 bucks. Well, guess what? You just sold your whole case down the stream and they're going to take all of it. Not what you want to do, guys. Okay. That's pre-settlement funding loans. How do you think they pay for these commercials? You see Long Cash, Oasis, U.S. Claims, Peachtree. You guys find out about them because they dump hundreds and hundreds of thousands of millions even into advertising. So you guys know about them. So you guys sitting there um, on your, if you're on your couch because you're disabled or you're on your couch because you were injured in an accident or whatever the case might be, they pay for certain slots during the middle of the day because they want people that are injured to watch it or late at night because they know people can't sleep. And they pay prime money and they're on there and they're pushing their loans. You see that and you go, oh my God, 1500 bucks would change my life right now. Maybe, sure, but under the right terms. It's not going to change your life if you have to pay back $10,000 in a year and a half, right? And many attorneys have, um, advise against these because they don't have relationships with these companies. I know these companies. I know the players are, okay? I beat them up a couple times and I know that, you know, which ones want to double and which ones don't. And then all of a sudden they, they, my client calls them and they're like, oh, client Smith, John Smith, we'll give you 38% interest. And then they're like, oh, and by the way, you know, attorney Brooke Goff represent, represents me. And they're like, oh, well, we'll talk to her. They call me and they're like, oh, Brooke, we'll give you the deal. You know, we'll compound it at 26%. And I'm like, well, why didn't you offer that to my client? Right? Why are you offering it to me? I'm like, I, you know, I don't have any skin in the game here. So guys, don't make your case unsettleable because you take a pre-settlement funding loan. Don't do it. Stupid. Do not sell your case upstream. You're better off just taking the money from the adjuster. Don't do that either.
I work with companies, I'm not going to say who I work for because this is not about that, that will lend on based on cases. So if you have a great case and they negotiate at the end, so if you have a great case, right, and they're local, they're in Connecticut, and you need, I mean, I've had them lend up to $10,000 to clients with back surgeries or clients that need, uh, you know, rotator cuff $5,000. They'll never lend you this money without a lawyer because I guarantee them that they will pay it out of your settlement, okay? That's huge because... They don't, they don't trust that they're going to get paid is the problem. That's why they won't lend you that much money. When a lawyer puts their name on it, they can actually come after me if I issue all your payments out and I don't pay them. Okay, That's why they do more on our types of cases. Um, so just keep that in mind. Pre-settlement funding companies that I deal with and the only ones I'll deal with are my clients will contact me. They're in Connecticut. They'll meet up with you. They'll go to you, whatever the case might be. And they'll lend you what the case is good for. So if the case is good for, I don't know, let's say rotate a tear and you need five grand, he'll do it, sure. As long as I, obviously I sign it. I'm not just saying I'm not the only attorney that will sign it. Um, there's other attorneys I'm sure that have relationships with these people, but this is my this is my video feed. I'm the one taking time out to talk to you guys and educate you, so we're gonna talk about me. Um, I sign them away and then we're good to go. And then I negotiated with them at the end. I just had him lend one of my clients 2,500 on a soft tissue case, which is astronomical. Of, that's a lot of money. His, he, took, he took like 3,200 for a payback, which is not terrible, guys. That might sound like a lot, but they have fees too, right? They have interest too. So when you take that all into account, that's like unheard of in, the pre, in this, this pre-settlement funding loan um, system. So there are pre-settlement funding loans that'll help you. Now, many of you are on comp and are probably thinking, oh, pre-settlement funding loans. I will tell you, most companies will not touch them. This company that I deal with in Connecticut will do them on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you know, obviously, we work out the payment terms. This is the beauty of this. It's not like for that for this working with this company. That's why I prefer it. And I've been doing it for the last year. It's not like they say, "Okay, here's my my contract." Boom. We change it. They'll change it around. They'll do it. So if you're a comp case and you you need money in a comp case. We'll, he will work with us to, because you know you get paid differently in comp, to account for and the you know payments, how they're going to be paid back, et cetera, et cetera. And you only get, again, you only pay them back if you get any sort of resolution, which is great. It's great for you. It's great for the case. And, and you can live because we all know with comp cases, guys, they like to hijack your checks. We all know I deal with it every day. They like to hold up your checks for a week. They like to go on vacation and not pay you checks. They like to do whatever the hell it takes to make you crazy so that you try to settle your case as quick as possible. It's bullshit and don't fall for it. Um, for in this particular kind of case, this particular company that I'm talking about, this pre-settlement funding loan company, will finance comp cases, which is unusual. It doesn't have to be a huge comp case. It just really depends on where you are in your comp case. And it makes it so that you can properly litigate the case out, right? You can properly take the steps that you need to get the most money in your case as possible and not have to worry about paying your bills. Now, I'm not saying this is going to fix all your problems, guys. Not doing that at all, right? This is not a, hey, look, I'm going to borrow instead of settle type situation. There's a cap on all settlements. I mean, we, they can't, we, we talk to them and we come up with what we feel the case is worth and then he'll lend up to a certain amount. But I'll tell you, if they're done the right way and you have a lawyer that actually knows what they're doing, these can be very, very useful tools and it can save you tens and tens of thousands of dollars later because now you're not rushing into settlement with the insurance company, giving them everything that they want and they need because you're desperate. The worst thing you can do, it's like going to the grocery store hungry, right? Do not, do not talk to the adjuster when you're desperate. And Again, this is one more reason why attorneys are so useful in these situations. When you sit down with your lawyer, ask, what do you know about pre-settlement funding loans? Do you, do you recommend them? Some attorneys will just be like, oh, just go file it and then let them know my information. Why are you doing the work? Your attorney should help you with this, okay, guys? Don't, the, the days of, of these attorneys just sitting back and letting the clients do all the work are over, okay? And that's what my firm does. We do not, absolutely do not have our clients do anything. All right. Other than obviously little tiny things that, you know, might may, may come in, like keep us updated on their treatment. You should not. You don't work for the lawyer. The lawyer works for you. Right. And that's been long. ridiculous. You need to make sure that you are doing everything you can do to protect yourself. And you do that in a slip and fall car accident workers comp case by getting legal representation. Because guess what, guys, what you might not know, adjuster, there's in-house counsel, which means and if you're in an accident and you've got Allstate, for instance, or what have you, they have a lawyer that's advising the adjusters on your case. 
If you slip and fall and you fall on somebody's property and Gallagher Bass is involved, guess what? Gallagher Bass has a team of lawyers that's telling them what to do. If you get hurt at work, guess what? You might be talking to the adjuster. That adjuster doesn't know. The adjuster is getting the information from the, the insurance or from the attorney's office that is going to appear on their case once you get a lawyer. It's always you versus a lawyer, guys. It's not you versus an adjuster ever. The adjusters do not have free reign like that. It's you versus a lawyer because they have lawyers you don't. So why you would do that to yourself? And I'm sitting here telling you, you will, you will, any, any, any legal fee associated with your case is going to more outweigh itself in, in what you're going to get additional. So if there's no risk to you, why people don't get lawyers are beyond me. They, they, some people think they're smarter than the system and, and you're not because the system they has insurance companies have spent billions and billions of dollars, billions learning how to beat you, learning how to say, Hey, look, Take advantage of the pro se claimants before they get lawyers. That's what they do. And it's stupid. I had a woman come out of my office. She has, she now needs a neck surgery. She settled her case. I can't recall the exact amount. Uh, she settled it for quite a bit. She, let's say maybe, I don't know, for as far as pro se goes, $20,000, right? Which is a lot of money for them to give her. Now she needs, she, they knew because they saw her imaging and they, they saw her, ex, their, her, um, her doctor's reports. They knew what this case was worth. And... I can tell you when I saw the reports and she had already signed the release, which was a damn shame and I couldn't get her out of it, the case is worth $350,000. She didn't want anything to do with anything. She didn't want to talk. She, I mean, she was so upset because it's her life. Yeah, guys, once you sign those releases, that's your life. And, it's, and you have no chance. I can't get rid of a release that you sign unless you do it under duress, which is very difficult to prove. So do it right from the beginning. You, if you get in an accident, you slip and fall, you get hurt at work, your first call should be to obviously medical professional, get attention, then to a lawyer. Because I can tell you right now, if you think you're having a heart attack at home, the first call you make is 911, right? Or you make a call to a doctor, you don't try to treat it yourself. Well, that's kind of what you're doing with a, with a, with a car accident case or a slip and fall case or a work case. You're basically having a, you're having a slow heart attack and you're trying to manage it yourself. You're eventually going to figure out you can't manage it yourself. It's getting worse and worse. Then you get a lawyer involved after all the aggravation and stress has been done. I'm telling you, my fee is irrelevant with the amount of money we get on these cases for people in compensation and your stress and your state of mind is worth far more than what you will ever get and save on your own. There is no, I can't think of one case actually that's come in my office where there would have ever been a cost savings to a client not to have me involved. Always, we beat the offer and we beat it by a lot. So again, guys, I hope this helps. I hope this, you know, really puts into your, um, gives you a different state of mind when it comes to these cases. It's not the end of the world. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, oh my God, what am I going to do with my car, my kids? I can't get to work. I'm going to pay my bills. Take a deep breath, meet with a lawyer. Because if you came in my office, I'd be like, okay, ma'am or sir, this is what we're going to do. And I have this company and he's going to come down and talk to you. Uh, this one company is going to come down. He's going to give you your options and everything else. I have no, again, I have no kickback, guys. I don't even get a cookie basket. Why? I don't want one. This is a, a, a in, informational peace of mind that I can give to my clients. I shouldn't benefit from it, neither should any other attorney, okay? That's very important. So again, guys, remember, it's not the end of the road when you get in an accident. It doesn't have to be the end of the road. You just need to take a deep breath, get your medical treatment, and let the attorneys do their job. If you need money, if you need money to survive, we talk to, to these pre-settlement funding companies. I, like I said, I talk, there's a couple, and we compare rates. Um, you know, and, and we get you the best deal we can. Again, we make no money on that. There's no fee on that. And then we get you set for a little while so that you can get yourself better um, and that you can, you know, get back to work or get back to living your life. Guys, I appreciate you all reaching, uh, you know, reaching out. Uh, this was a main a question that keeps coming up and up and up and up. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching now. We've had, we've gone up to about 14 or 15 during this. And I know these views, these, these videos get like 40 some odd thousand views. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope this has given you a little bit more of an understanding of the process. I'm happy to talk to any of you privately if you want to discuss. Um, my phone number is 203-399-0000. You can push number one in my office to get some information from you. Um, you can email me at brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E, at golflawgroup.net. You can Facebook message me. You can uh, text the office at 203-399-0000. Um, 
Guys, we've been rocking and rolling over here. We're, I, I don't know, all these attorneys are saying, oh, it's slow, I am busier than ever. And I'm busy because I educate people and I let people know that we actually care. And by doing that, people feel comfortable with us and they know that we're gonna get the best result. And I can tell you right now, you should see some of the testimonials that are gonna be posted. We've been knocking it out of the park. I had an attorney the other day ask me to prove to him that I got this certain amount of a settlement. I got 390 on a car accident case and uh, the attorney did not believe it. He wanted me to prove it to him. And I did, and he still almost fell over. Why? Because when you're not in such a rush to, to make your money as the lawyer and you're more in a rush to get the client justice and you'll do whatever it takes and put it, you know, put your schedule and your, um, you know, your money and your costs, your expenses on the line to make sure that happens, it speaks volumes to insurance companies and they wanna pay you more money because then they're afraid. They're afraid you're gonna try cases. The insurance companies hate that I do these videos. Are you kidding me? They don't want you guys to know these things. I'm, I, attorneys have said, why are you telling clients these things? They're not gonna hire lawyers anymore. Oh yeah, they will. Oh yeah, they, I have no question that I'm not losing one client or not one of you are going to not hire a lawyer now because of this video. Because I'm showing you what you don't know. And I'm showing and I'm educating you so you can make an educated decision on hiring a lawyer. I want somebody to wanna hire me, not need to hire me, right? That's my goal. And that's what I do and that's why I do what I do. People want information, come on in. Sit down with me, happy to give it to you. Call me, happy to give it to you. If you want representation, there's, there's, I, I can tell you right now, I, I, I challenge somebody to find somebody better, more dedicated to their clients than we are. So again, guys, thank you. Listen to us on Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning actually, at 9 a.m. at 104.1. I think we're covering comp injuries tomorrow or motor vehicle, I'm not sure. It uh, depends on the calls that come in. Call in if you have questions. Um, again, share your support. Happy to have um, you guys all listening. Um, like us on Facebook, uh, like us on Twitter, like us on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, uh, you know, like I said, um, Times are changing, guys, and this is the new generation of injury lawyer, the generation that works for their clients. Their clients don't work for them. So keep an eye out for uh, our new contests and everything else. Cal um, our social media uh, manager, Kyle, will be posting. And um, again, have a great night. Enjoy it. It's really, really hot, but enjoy it outside, and I appreciate you all watching. Um, and share this, guys, because you never know. There's somebody out there that just got in an accident. To, I, to accidents in Connecticut, I think somewhere around... I think they said about 85 happened a day in Connecticut, something like that, up and down with holidays. Somebody's gonna see it. And they're gonna be like, they're, they're gonna make, almost make the mistake of selling with the insurance. And now they're gonna be like, maybe there is a chance. Again, take it easy guys, thanks a lot. And have a great night. Uh, and again, listen to 104.1 in the morning, thanks a lot.